Ever get that sinking feeling? You know, when you realize you accidentally left your front door unlocked all day long? Thought it was secure, but uh, anyone could have just walked right in. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Not a good feeling. Well, today's deep dive is about a vulnerability, and it gives off those same uh uh-oh vibes, but like on a way bigger scale. We're talking about a security flaw that could leave, well, countless Linux and UNIX servers vulnerable. And to make matters a bit more interesting, there's a new scanner out there, and it's shining a spotlight on just how widespread this whole thing might actually be. Yeah, it's fascinating. A little concerning. This isn't just theoretical either. This has the potential to impact, well, everyone, really. Businesses, organizations, even individuals, mm-hmm. like on a daily basis. Okay, so let's get into it. The vulnerability, it exists in something called CUPS. Now, I'll admit that's not exactly a household name. So what is CUPS? And more importantly, why should we care? You're right. Not exactly a term you'd toss around over coffee. Yeah. Though it does relate to something I think we all use. Yeah. Printers. CUPS stands for Common Unix Printing System. And it's the software, kind of working behind the scenes, that allows... Linux or Unix computers to actually, well, talk to printers. So when I print out, say, my boarding pass or grab a takeout menu from that little printer they have at the counter, CUPS is kind of humming along the background, making it all work. Exactly. And the thing is, it's not just on your personal computer. It's used on a massive scale. Mm -hmm. We're talking servers, web hosts, even those big network devices most people never even see. They often rely on CUPS as well. Okay, so this isn't just about someone hacking my printer and making it spit out a thousand copies of that I love cats meme. This has, like, much bigger implications, right? Oh, absolutely. The vulnerability officially is known as CVE-2024-47176. It exists in a part of CUPS called CUPS Browsed. CUPS Browsed. Yeah, so think of CUPS like a house, right? And CUPS Browsed is like one specific room with a door. Now, that room is supposed to be locked, only accessible from inside the house behind your firewall. Okay, so to continue with the analogy, someone figured out how to leave that door wide open. You got it. And that open door, that's our vulnerability. It lets anyone, potentially anyone on the entire internet, gain access to the server, not just the printer anymore. Okay, so now this is sounding serious. This isn't about, like, leaking a few embarrassing office memos. We're talking about full-on server access. So what could an attacker actually do if they have that kind of access? Uh Well, we're talking about something called remote code execution, or RCE. Think of it, I guess, like giving someone the keys to your house, right? They can walk in, take what they want, maybe rearrange the furniture, or even just lock you out entirely. Oh, no. And in the case of a server, this means they could steal sensitive data, install ransomware, even use the server to launch attacks on other systems. So one minute you're printing out a spreadsheet, the next minute hackers are holding all your data hostage. Talk about escalation. Right. And it doesn't stop there. Oh, there's more. This flaw, it can be used to amplify DDoS attacks too. Which are? DDoS, distributed denial of service. Right, of course. Sorry, for those of us who don't speak fluent tech, what does that mean? What is a DDoS attack? Sure, so a DDoS attack is basically like Flooding a store with so many phone calls that legitimate customers can't get through. It overloads the system. So instead of a busy signal, the whole system just crashes. Exactly. And this CUPS vulnerability, it makes it scarily easy to amplify those attacks. Remember how CUPS browse can be tricked into sending out those responses? Right. Well, attackers can exploit this to send a small request to a vulnerable server, and it'll blast back a huge response. It's like a megaphone. So they can hijack these servers and amplify their attacks. Scary combination. Before we delve into any kind of solutions, and I promise we'll get to that, let's talk about this new scanner everyone's buzzing about. It was created by a security researcher, goes by the name Malware Tech, real name Marcus Hutchins. He's a bit of a legend, isn't he? Yeah, very well respected. And for good reason. He's got a real track record of developing security tools that are not only powerful, but accessible to a wider audience, which is important. So his latest project, the scanner, it's basically like a bloodhound sniffing out all those vulnerable CUPS instances. Right? It's a good analogy. Yeah, the scanner, it sends out a specially crafted request, kind of like a digital knock, I guess you could say, to a network. And if a vulnerable CUPS browsed instance is listening, it's going to respond in a very predictable way, yeah. essentially giving away its location. So, like, shining the bat signal, but only the vulnerable systems can see it and answer the call, which I'm guessing is not a good thing in this scenario. Okay, so we've got this vulnerability, which is basically like leaving a side door open to your network. And now we've got this tool that can find those open doors. No problem. 
This is where I think it gets really interesting, even for people who don't consider themselves techie, because this isn't just about servers in some far off data center. So why should the average person care about this? Like, what's the takeaway? That's the question, isn't it? You might not be managing servers, but think about all the organizations you interact with on a daily basis. Your bank, hospitals, online stores, even your kid's school. A lot of them rely on these very same systems that are vulnerable to this CUPS flaw. It's all connected. So my online banking info, my medical records, even that embarrassing school photo that's still floating around out there, <laughs> it's all potentially at risk because of vulnerability in a printing system. It really highlights how interconnected our digital lives are these days. One, maybe seemingly small flaw, and it can have this ripple effect. Okay, that's a little unsettling, not gonna lie. But before we spiral into full-blown digital paranoia, I'm sensing there's a glimmer of hope here. We're not doomed, are we? What can be done about this? Not at all, not at all. Awareness is always the first step, and that's exactly where tools like this new scanner come in. Because by actually being able to identify these vulnerable systems, we can start patching them up, you know, closing that open door, so to speak. Yeah. Patching, so that's like reminding people to close their windows before a storm, right? Simple, but crucial. Exactly. But we've all been there, hitting that ignore button on those update reminders. So what would you say to someone who's thinking, ah, it's just one little update, I'll get to it later. I get it, honestly. <laughs> those update reminders can be annoying, they pop up at the worst times. Yeah. But patching is essential, really. It's like locking your front door you wouldn't leave that unlocked, would you? And this whole CPS thing, it just underscores how critical it is to patch things in a timely manner. And it's not always about getting the latest and greatest features. Sometimes it's about that basic digital hygiene, just like, you know, washing your hands. So update your systems, folks. It's the digital equivalent of a flu shot. But beyond just patching, are there bigger lessons here? Because this feels, I don't know, bigger than just this one vulnerability. Oh, absolutely. I think what this situation does is it throws a spotlight on how much cybersecurity is constantly evolving. New threats, they're emerging all the time, and we need to be ready to adapt. It's a little bit of a cat and mouse game, honestly, between the good guys, security researchers like malware tech, and, well, you know, the people trying to exploit these vulnerabilities. So on the one hand, we have this new scanner, which is a powerful tool for the good guys, but couldn't the same tool also be used by, you know, those with less noble intentions? I mean, if it can help researchers find vulnerabilities, couldn't it also help attackers find them faster, too? That's the double-edged sword, really, of a lot of technological advancements, especially in cybersecurity. Every new tool, every new technique, it can be used for good or, well, not so good. It all depends on who gets their hands on it first and, you know, how they decide to use it. That's a sobering thought. So it's not even just about finding and fixing these vulnerabilities. It's about trying to anticipate how those very fixes could then be used against us. Exactly. Okay. Constant arms race, trying to stay one step ahead. Really makes you think, doesn't it, yeah. about the ingenuity at play in the cybersecurity world. I mean, you have these brilliant minds like malware tech creating tools to protect us. Right. And on the other hand, you know there's someone out there thinking, how can I use this to my advantage? How can I get around this? Yeah, it's a constant back and forth. Yeah. One side develops a shield, the other immediately starts trying to figure out how to get around it. But that's kind of why we do this, right? Right. Knowledge is power. Exactly. By even just talking about this, by understanding how these vulnerabilities work, how they can be exploited, we're better off, right? We're equipping ourselves to be more vigilant, more discerning users of technology. I think that's right. Absolutely. So to bring this all home for our listeners, what's the one key message? If they only remember one thing from this whole conversation, what should it be? Ooh, one thing. Um, I guess I would say... Don't just blindly click update later. Don't do it. Treat those software updates, even though they're annoying, treat them like a critical health checkup. They might not be fun, might not be glamorous, but they're essential if you want to maintain a healthy digital life. It's like brushing your teeth, but for your devices. There you go. A little maintenance goes a long way. And speaking of maintenance, I'm going to go ahead and run those updates I've been putting off. This whole conversation has been a real eye-opener. That's what we like to hear. That's the spirit. Stay curious, stay proactive, and, well, you know, stay safe. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the CUPS vulnerability and this new scanner, the one making waves in the cybersecurity world. Remember, folks, this landscape, it's constantly changing. So to navigate it safely, we need to stay informed and try to stay ahead of the curve. Until next time, stay curious and stay safe out there.